16 minutes past five, let's return to our main story, which is the continuing hunt for the man believed to be involved in Monday's terror attack in Berlin. German investigators say the fingerprints of the Tunisian suspect, Anis Amri, have been found in the lorry, on the door of the lorry, used to kill uh, 12 people uh, at the Christmas market. And police have carried out a number of raids today and uh, border controls with Belgium and the Netherlands have been tightened. In the meantime, we're going to go to Dusseldorf now and speak to Julie Lennartz, who is an expert on Islamism and counter-terrorism and executive director of the Human Security Centre. Julie, thank you very much for joining us. And what are the main questions being asked um, in Germany today in the wake of this attack? Well, I think most people want to know what type of measures the government is thinking to take now to prevent um, such attacks from taking place in the future. Um, we, I mean, this year we've seen a lot of police uh, patrolling Christmas markets and the Christmas celebrations in the country anyway, and obviously after what happened um, on Tuesday, um, um, authorities have decided to reinforce um, police presence on the streets. I also expect we'll see more uh, and new surveillance measures in Germany. We don't have nearly as many CCTV cameras as we have in the UK. Um, but I want to stress one very important point, and that is this. Um, no matter which measures we are going to take now in the wake of this atrocity, we have to realize that terrorists in the past have shown an incredible ability, really, to adapt to new measures. In fact, the type of attacks that we are seeing right now with trucks, with cars, with knives, with weapons, is a direct response to, to the security measures that we've took after 9-11, uh, after 7-7. They've learned from that. They do know now that uh, such large plots uh, run a run a great risk of being intercepted in the first place, so they've adapted and these are their new strategies. We've seen that in Israel for many years, and, uh, and even though Israel has one of the best security uh, and intelligence services in the world, they find it very difficult to prevent. These security measures are always um, um, sort of a, a, um, an, a defensive measure, uh, and we have to realize that the focus must be on prevention. We have to prevent people from becoming radicalized in, in the first place. What are the signs in Germany that new measures are being considered to counter the process of radicalizing? Um, obviously among um, groups uh, that, that we would associate with, with uh, radical beliefs, but clearly people coming in who maybe are not integrated in a way that some people would like. Are, are those the main areas? Yes, I think that the, the sort of the short-term uh, measures that are now being taken is to just reinforce security on the street, you know, reassure people that uh, the government and the security services are in control. But long-term, of course, we have to think uh, in, in, in context and we, we have to think about what we can do to prevent these attacks from taking place. Um, and and we'll, see, we'll see more debate uh, how exactly we're going to do that over the next couple of days. I think one thing that Germany will need to reflect on is um, on the way how they've been taking in large numbers of people. Um, many people here feel like the problem is not so much that Germany has taken people in, that, uh, you know, Germany has uh, has understood it has a, a moral and humanitarian responsibility to help people in need. But many people feel like um, um, it, it, it has been a huge mistake to, to let these people in without due process, without proper registration, and uh, we are suffering the consequences of that now. Just a final thought, uh, Julie, if I may. When the Chancellor, uh, Angela Merkel, was commending people for their calm response following the, the dreadful uh, attack on Monday. Now, what is your sense of people's response? And is there a sense of a, another change of attitude towards the Chancellor herself? Well, I think, um, I think um, people have responded very graciously um, to, to what has happened. In fact, I mean, all the people that I've spoken to, um, they've said um, we will not give in to fear mongering, we will not give in to what the terrorists actually want. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, they want real answers. They want, uh, they want the government to respond to this. They want to know what, what, what the government is going to do about it, how, they, how we're going to tighten security, because obviously people are afraid, you know. Um, and um, Angela Merkel is under a lot of pressure. Um, not just from the general public, but also from her own um, party, her own uh, uh, government coalition. And I think if she doesn't find the right answers to these very legitimate concerns and very legitimate questions, then this will probably translate into the next year when she's fighting uh, for, her, um, for her chancellorship and, and it could haunt her very badly. Uh, Julie, thank you very much for talking to us uh, today. It's good, uh, good of you to join us. Julie Lennartz there, who is the Executive Director of Human Security Centre in Dusseldorf.